woman who has actualized in her life so many powerful messages of what it is to be a Jewish woman, to know that your niche is usually right in front of you. In her case, in a very literal way, please join me in welcoming Nina Charlotte. For those of you who were just in uh, Charlie's breakout session, here's a really important piece of advice. Don't ever follow him <laughs> and do a speech when he just spoke about great ways to do a public speaking, because I just ripped apart everything I thought I was going to say. So bear with me. I'm going to try to use his principles. Um, but it is an absolute, absolute honor to be here today. My name is Mindy Shire, and I am the founder of Runway of Dreams. We're an organization that partners with the fashion industry to adapt mainstream clothing for the differently abled population. So everything really does start with a story. Every single one of you here has a story, a story that led you to go on these trips. For me, I'm so grateful, it led me to these incredible women. Um, but my story begins that I am a fashion designer by trade and the mom of three beautiful kids. <laughs> See, you made me very emotional in that, so sorry for that too. We said to be very real, so I'm going to be as real as I possibly can. So my middle child, Oliver, was born with a very rare form of muscular dystrophy um, that causes muscle weakness, um, pulmonary dysfunction, and spinal deformity. So when Oliver turned eight, he came to me and said, Mom, I really want to wear jeans to school. I, my friends are wearing jeans. I wear sweatpants every day in my life. I want to wear jeans. And I had to make a decision. I'm sure there's a lot of moms in the room that understand what I'm about to say. But self-confidence is something that you want so badly, no matter what any issue is with your child. And I had to look at my eight-year-old and say, Make that decision. Do I say, I'm sorry, you can't wear jeans to school. You can't do the button and zipper. I can't fit the jeans over your leg braces. It's not an option for you. But who could do that to that beautiful little face? So I said, you know what? <laughs> you are absolutely, you know what? Guess what, Oliver? You are wearing jeans to school tomorrow. No doubt about it. And we made it work. I had to kind of sneak into school and help him go to the bathroom that day because I knew he wasn't going to be able to do it on his own. He didn't wear his leg braces, which of course wasn't the safest, best decision. But guess what? He walked into school that day with his head held high, feeling just like the other kids. And very similar to what Adrian was just talking about, about outsides and insides. Here you have this beautiful boy who actually on the inside felt just like the other eight-year-old, so much so that it didn't even occur to him that he wasn't going to be able to wear jeans. So I had to make his outside fit his inside. There wasn't a part of my body that wasn't going to make that happen. So it was really on that day that I decided that, wow, my God, I'm a fashion designer by trade. I do know how to fix things and make them better. I'm gonna make this better. And not just for Oliver, but for all the other people out there that have a disability. There's no way I could possibly be alone in this feeling of, of having clothing challenges. So in August of 2013, I started My Way of Dreams. Because it was so important to me to make sure that other people and other families and other children and other senior citizens who lost their dignity because they couldn't dress themselves anymore. I wanted that confidence to be able to be felt by everybody that was felt by my son on that day. Because guess what? Clothing can make a difference. It really can. It's a basic need. Can't walk around without wearing clothes, so shouldn't everybody be able to wear what they want to wear? It does define who you are. I put on this outfit today because it made me feel really good about myself. I'm sure you put on your outfit today because it made you feel good about who you are. And it defines who you are. So it's an interesting concept when we all talk about being in the fashion industry and what fashion means. What does fashion
fashion really, really mean? It doesn't mean that you have to walk down a runway or you need to wear the greatest fashions by the best designers, etc. It's It really actually defines who you are. It's, it's, it is that clear delineation between me and Michelle, who also looks very, very beautiful today. <laughs> But it is, it de definitely helps to define who you are. So can you even imagine not having that capability or even being able to dress yourself? So this is how Runway of Dreams really got started. So I started working with focus groups and doing a ton of surveys and really trying to get a better understanding of were there ways to modify mainstream clothing that would help the person that has a limb difference and that one over there that is in a wheelchair for the rest of their life or Down syndrome or the many, many, many different iterations of disabilities. And thankfully, we were able to come up with the fact that there were really three different categories that were affected. And that was the closures that are used. So buttons, snappers, zippers, open eyes were a challenge across the board. Having the ability to adjust your clothing to fit and a different body shape. And last was having different ways to get in and out of the clothing. So for example, putting something over your head, if you are missing a limb or you don't have muscle capacity, is an impossible task. So how can we better get that clothing on your body? But yet the same clothing that everybody else was wearing. So I was able to develop these prototypes that I then went and just did a dog and pony show to the industry. I used every last contact that I ever had and helped them understand that here we have a population that has literally never been a part of the fashion industry before. They were never, it was never in their mindset of this, these people that are, guess what, are consumers too. Mm -hmm. they, they have to wear clothes, it's, it's just not an option. So, really becoming an educator to the industry, not why did you do this? How could you be so callous? And I'm thinking that not everybody's skinny and beautiful and tall and all of that. It was really more presenting it that this is my story. I, I am a mouthpiece for the people that um, have not been a part of this industry. So how can we make it better? How do we bridge this gap together? <laughs> So the modifications that we developed were really made so that it could be incorporated into the already existing process of, of the design system. So it's the same fabrications, same designs, but they're modified. All the, the closures are, are magnets that were developed by this incredible woman who, whose husband had Parkinson's and could no longer dress himself. So she replaced the, the mechanism of a button, so it looks like a button, when it's closed, so it has the same visual effect, but it's a magnet behind it. So you don't have to go through that process. So we use all those magnets in our product. Everything is adjustable. And guess what? There are different ways to get in and out of the clothing. So having that opportunity to really work with the industry on the, in, the, in the best way possible to say, here's literally millions of people, one in five people in our country have a disability. In, in 2016, when do you find a market that hasn't been tapped into yet? Yeah. Well, here you have it, and this is how you do it, and this is how you engage with them. So in February 2016, we partnered with Tommy Hilfiger and developed the first collection ever for the disability So now, here we are. I, I have. I get, uh, I believe, a Facebook message from none other than, than Judy, beautiful blonde sitting there, mm -hmm. saying uh, about this, this trip to Israel and being a fashion influencer. And I'm like, oh my God, that is so sweet. I am so honored. Thank you for even thinking of me. But there's just no way. I can't, can't possibly. There's, I have so much work to do. I have, I have a family and I've got this, this, this major mission I've got to do. And, Baruch Hashem, <laughs> she did not give up. It was constant. And she said, you must, you must, you must. And, and I remember one time we actually spoke, and I think I cried through the 
whole conversation. I don't know why I was crying. I just felt such a pull and a, and a need that there was a reason why I had to go. And thankfully to Judy, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Not because I have also never been to Israel before and didn't know what was ahead of me. I had no idea this emotional connection that I was going to feel for this, this nation that, that as a Jewish woman that I, I just never would have put to the forefront of my life if it hadn't have been for my story, for my story, which led me to runway dreams and led me to meet these incredible women that individually are making such a beautiful change. So as we talk about stories and making a difference, and, and I, I have the great fortune, and obviously the, one of the benefits of having social media is when these phenomenal things happen, like going to the White House, I get, oh, you're amazing, you're incredible, you're da 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 And I am so grateful to hear all of that, but I'm actually, I'm not that amazing, I'm not that incredible. If you saw my house right there, there's dishes in the sink, my beds are made, I forgot my seven-year-old had a birthday party this weekend. We completely missed it. I am so far from being any part of incredible. But you know what? I have a story, and I needed to tell it. And I needed to look up from my own world and say, how do I, how do I make a difference with this? And fortunately, I, I think Runway Dreams is doing that, and I'm not going to stop until it actually does. And there's adaptive clothing for every budget out there, but you all have a story. You all have, you're all incredible, and I hope that you are inspired by your individual stories, and obviously you're all here because you're leaders, and it was an absolute privilege to be here, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful to be in your presence.